welcome to the Concealed Taco Dudes podcast, episode 130. Woo! That was great enunciation. Today is was. Enunciation Day. It's National, National Enunciation, enunciation Day. Day. Yeah, make we'll sure to, to enunciate. Make the word sure properly. to enunciate properly. You know, my son yes, could use tacos today. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. And you ask him a question. <laughs> what? <laughs> What? Mm. Mumbling. He gets mad. He gets mad. I said. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, dude. Like he's got a mouthful of food yeah. or something. Like enunciate. Yeah. My wife gets made fun of because she over enunciates things. Oh really? She pronounces every letter and every. Word. Why would you? Why would you make fun of someone for over enunciation? Because it's hilarious. <laughs> Well, there is another problem, and I, I, I'm all the time going, what? I don't know if you guys have noticed. What? <laughs> huh? What? If my wife's not looking at me, I can't hear her. <laughs> so we're in the car, and she's saying something, and I'm going, what? What? <laughs> so it's not enunciation. It's old man ears. Is what it is. Yeah. That and well, it, I, I, I have those old man ears, too. I have tinnitus. I, oh. Uh, pretty mm, bad. I don't have that. Mm. But yeah, back in the day, we didn't believe in ear protection. So my wife knows that if if I'm not looking at her, I'm not listening. Yeah, so mm-hmm. that's I get that too. <laughs> okay, are you ready to go? Where are we going? We have this thing tonight. When did you tell me about that last <laughs> week? Really? What? When? It, well, you were doing this and that. Did I say anything when you told me? No. <laughs> that means I didn't hear what you were saying. So my wife says, you're not listening to me. And I say, well, that's an odd way to start a conversation. <laughs> a lot of conversations start with, you're not listening to me. And I don't get it. Yeah. Could be your enunciation. Yeah. Which brings us right back around to where we're supposed to be going and continuing. To the sponsors. The sponsors. Yeah. yeah. NOA Bolt Molds at NOA 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 Come on Jason Annunciation Day NOE Bullet Molds dot com The finest providers of bullet casting paraphernalia and primer refurbishing kits reloading yeah, ref- Re- I would say refer- reuse- refurbishing. Refurbishing, reloading it. Reloading, kind of primer, like reloading yeah, you're yeah. kind of reloading. So Al had this request from some guys to make these primer refurbishing kits. Uh-huh. You know, it has a little, like a die and a punch to yeah. flatten out the... In fact, I think we should go to lunch down there. Maybe go down and pick up some powder. Mm. Take a look at those. You know, do a maybe, little walkthrough so. of it. <laughs> yeah, Just a bro anyway, day. Anyways, they, bro they, day on uh, Annunciation Day. He made a bunch of these kits to refurbish primers. Huh. And so knock out the, the... Yeah, the dimple the from dimple. the primer. And then they refill it's it. The, it's actually a small nipple. <laughs> inverted nipple yeah sure it is Stan yeah. looks at it from the other side so you know be... like a guy that has a hammer everything's a nail so yeah, yeah. Okay. everything's a nipple for Stan <laughs> so anyways he made these kits and then they like sold out the first day no oh, kidding wow. oh, yeah so... I had no idea there's a demand for people to make to or refurbish their primers. Well, it makes sense now. Oh, yeah. Nobody can find primers. Yeah, so it makes sense in a couple different ways. Like, if you, for the emergency preparedness or prepper factor of, hey, apocalypse comes, I can reload my own primers. You right. just got to make sure you have some of the priming compound, right. which I've heard is not that hard to get. Oh. Huh. So there's there's a couple people on MeWe. MeWe? It's kind of like the the alternative for Facebook that I think only the gun people went to. Okay. So they have the information there. They're the ones who contacted Al about making those primer kits, uh-huh. primer refurbishing kits. So yeah. you, you have that, and then you also have the cost. So if you can reload it for cheaper, and if they're reliable, then... And, you ha- and you're retired, and you have time. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say time. So you time, have more, t- more time than money. See, in the, in the equation, uh, time equals money. That might not be true. True. <laughs> if you're retired and have nothing, yeah, uh, but, and that's not even the thing. Part of it is just like the the satisfaction of doing it. Yeah, so, so there's I, there's that too. But I'm, I'm sure it's more. He, he made a run, another run of I think a hundred of them. Yeah, and wow. so they're listed right now. So oh, if cool. you guys are into that kind of thing, like yeah. refurbishing primers, yeah. then go check it out. Use coupon code FLT zero zero one, and it will save you money. Mm-hmm. I also promise to give the listeners heads up when they ran the first set of uh, steel molds. Oh, yeah. And so 
Al has, I think, I think there's only like five left. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> not much of a heads up. <laughs> he, he didn't Did he, run he, too many the first run, but he didn't. He, he run didn't run two? like oh, okay. a, a ton. So he did six, and there are five left. <laughs> no, I think he might have done like ten or something. Oh, so yeah. not not a ton. But of they're still them. available. But they are available, and the mold model number is the 434-234-RF. So look for that mold. It's a round flat, and it's, you know, about... Normally it casts about a, I guess, according to this, a 234 grain. Are we mold. talking 45 caliber? or 44, 44 mag. 44 mag, yeah. okay. So, so if you are looking for a steel mold in 44 mag made by NOE, they have a few left in stock. Go ahead and order those. And cool. And normally Excellent. we try to do the podcast in the uh, NOE studio. Yeah, but it's time the has machines been. are we just running right now. So uh, we haven't made we, it out there for a while. Yeah, yeah. Just and you can you can and... sense the quality. It's just it's yeah. diminished. The audio quality. Yes. Is better so we need there. to get back in there. We do. Yes. We do. We've been, so, we've been lazy as of late. Yes, NOE bullet molds. And if you wanted to save your ears from that tinnitus, that tan... This tan. Tan. <laughs> Stan. Stan. No, enunciate. Come yes. on. Yes. Stan. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Stan. Yes. Has. Yes, I'm in Then deep. you can always shoot air guns. Oh, yes. Yeah. And go to utahairguns.com. Yeah. Check out their air guns and use coupon code... Air candy. And it will give you... Free shipping and turret stickers. Well, yep. that, that's only if you get a compensator on it or a. They're a lot quieter than real guns. Well, moderator. A moderator. Moderator. Because moderator. you know they're so dang noisy. They need moderators. Yeah. Some of them are kind of loud. Some of them are kind of loud. Are the, they really? The big yeah. Boars, the yeah. big boars are kind of like oh, shooting yeah. a twenty-two. Yeah. Rifle. If it's supersonic, it. you'd get the clap. Yeah. The supersonic clap. Yeah. 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 <laughs> not, not the regular clap. Not the, the other one. The small <laughs> boom. The sonic boom. <laughs> Yeah. Con- continuing on, yes, you tire guns, concealment solutions. Okay, how about that guy? I was I was thinking of someone. You else, know, but... he he can't enunciate that that concealment, concealment solutions, solutions guy. It's true, yeah. it's true. <laughs> What's new at concealment solutions, Nothing. Jason? Just working my tail off. Trying what to keep what up are you making the most of this week? Holsters. Or, I guess last last week. <laughs> no, he's got was, t- he's uh, got the stock things too. It was the air gun stock. Yeah, drop yeah. leg holsters. Drop legs. Yeah, cool. did a lot of drop legs. Everybody's getting ready to get out in the yeah. wilderness, and yeah. they want to they want to carry their guns. A lot of in a them comfy like way. for uh, guns with optics. Or, well, not optics, but well, optics and or lights and lasers and stuff like that. And suppressors, probably. I like the chest holder better. Well, I've got that little twenty two of drop leg. I really like that, but I think for a hunting yeah. situation, I think I'd go for the chest holster. Yeah, the chesticles. Something between the chesticles. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it fits really nicely behind your binocular case. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys will wear the binocular case on their chest. I see. And it is a nice fit right behind it. No issues. Um, Isn't there another way you can do that too? Depending on the bino case, if they have uh, Velcro, uh, you, you've got a holster that has Velcro on it. Yeah, you can stick inside I do. the bino case. Yeah, I haven't seen a bino case with Velcro on the back of it. Well, I've seen cases that are quote unquote bino cases with multiple. Uh, well, not bino cases, but they look exactly like it with yeah. multiple compartments. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would anyway. work too. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, check us out at concealmentsolutions.com. Use the code show me the candy mm-hmm. at checkout and you'll save fifteen percent and get some swag at Schwag. And you tire guns was air candy. Air right? candy. And you'd get swag and stuff. Okay. Yeah. 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 And we have uh Magholder, Magholder.com, best horizontal mag carriers out there. And they do have some what tactical belts or he's uh, he's um Ricky's doing a lot of new products outside of mag carriers so yeah he's got a line of belts um knives so you, you can pick up uh, mag holder branded gear mm. oh, that's, cool. that's pretty cool so go check them out at magholder.com use the code get in the van i have candy or <laughs> how, how do you kiss your, your, your love yeah and you have to sing it like a bg well, when you write it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you call, when you, you type have to it. Sing. <laughs> yeah. You have to be singing. You have to be singing it while you type it yeah. in. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Okay. Sorry. All right. And last but not least, we have... Lee at Black Eyes. Black Eyes Black Eyes Coatings. Yeah. I will say we this last Wednesday we did go down. Oh, yeah? The young men's group. Yeah. And... How was it? It was awesome. The I did have to do a little bit of translation from video game speak 
to <laughs> real life speak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of it was funny. One of the boys was asking Lee. He's like, "Have you done any heavy snipers?" <laughs> and and Lee Lee gave this weird look like, uh, what, "What did you say?" <laughs> and so he I, I didn't enunciate. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I I translated from video game speak to real life, and I asked him if he'd done any long range rifles. <laughs> Oh, okay. And <laughs> yeah, so he he had you know, <laughs> no kidding. He, he, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. Pr- he probably had twelve of them in the large works. large caliber, <laughs> long range rifles. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what the equivalent of a heavy sniper would be. I would think so. Yeah. So, anyways, depending on the video, it was it was great because he saved a stock that he was going to dip. Uh huh. So he showed us the process. Oh, cool. So he's good at it. Yeah, he, he is. He's really good at it. And yeah. he made it look super easy. It came out and it was like perfect. Yeah. I was like, oh, dang, that's that's awesome. Yeah. So he said that no one has used the pig find pigs yet. Really? Okay. So no one has actually called him and done it yet. Okay. So I might have to do You're that. You're still waiting. Yeah. So the boys are going to pick. And the boys didn't pick the flying pigs. Well, they're, they, <laughs> they, they, they didn't. I didn't have them pick while we were there because it would have taken forever. Yeah. Right? So we got the tour of the shop. And anyways, kudos to Lee for performing a great service and yeah. a great service. Yeah. So. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Oh, and when you uh, call Lee to send him in, arrange to send in whatever. Tell him you want slickery. slickery. Yeah. Make it slickery. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. I think that's it. All right. right. Sponsors. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and go into a news story. We haven't, we done, haven't done self-defense in the news forever. Yeah. <laughs> Usually Jason does that, so maybe that says something. No, about usually Jason. I have one and we forget to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we forget? Oh, oh yeah. My. Okay, yeah, it's all my fault. <laughs> um, this one, a little bit interesting. 17 year old hospitalized with neck wound. A would be carjacker remained hospitalized Friday in New Orleans after his intended victim shot him in the neck. The wounded 17 year old arrived unresponsive Thursday night at the hospital, where police also found his alleged accomplice in the botched Bywater theft, a law enforcement, or law enforcement source said. The second suspect, also 17, reportedly admitted participating in the crime. That That's bad on you, dude. You don't ever admit. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I just drove him to the hospital. I don't know what's going on. That's what you say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. The, you sound like you have experience. The police Jeez. department planned, planned to book both with armed robbery and illegal possession of a gun. <laughs> Um, the crime was reported on the 500 block of Louisiana Street. Stand in know. Louisiana. In Louisiana. Gotcha. Stop by, say Go hi. Um, <laughs> Stop by, say hi. Police arrived at 7:08 p.m. ten minutes after being called, according to public publicly available data. I can't read today. And it's, and even, it's and even, even enunciate day. And it's even large print. <laughs> wow. Yeah. There, the two teens targeted a 48-year-old man who had gotten out of his vehicle and was walking toward his house. The teens drove their own vehicle in reverse down the man's street and got out of the passenger seat. Uh, One got out of the passenger seat, pointed a gun at the man, and demanded his keys. This is where it gets interesting. So, if you guys are like me, you run through scenarios through your head periodically. Oh, fuck. You know, you're at the store, or you're in the restaurant, or you're whatever, and and you got nothing else to think about. And you're like, what if this happened right now? What would I do? I'm pretty sure this guy had done that before, because this is what he does. Wait, wait, let me predict. Okay. This is like what I would do. Okay. I would throw my keys on the ground, Uh huh. and then when they look to grab the keys, I'd pull out my own gun. But- Very similar. And I've had the same thought. <clears throat> So, the man told police he flung his keys, took cover under a nearby car, and pulled out a pistol. Ooh, that's even better. I know. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. This guy this guy had thought about this before. He said he saw... You want my keys? <laughs> Go get them. Here they are. <laughs> Throw them into the bushes. Yeah. <clears throat> rose, rose bushes. Rose he, bushes. Yeah. He saw one teen by his vehicle pointing a gun at him. The man told police he fired a single shot at the teen then ran for his house. He said he heard someone scream an expletive, then both teens drove away on Louisiana in their vehicle. In their vehicle or in his vehicle? In their vehicle. vehicle. Yeah. Oh. 
Because okay. he got shot in yeah. the freaking neck. Yeah. The teens picked up a third person, oh. then went to the hospital. Gets it more interesting. Their police seized two pistols, one of them stolen from the accomplice, who told officers the guns belonged to him and the wounded suspect. The suspected accomplice was with his grandmother. That's who they stopped to pick oh. up. Grandma, you need to go to the hospital with us. We're scared. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Was she an accomplice? And both agreed yeah. to interviews. At the scene of the crime, police found evidence of a single shot. Since May, That's good aim. But you got a bullet hole. Yeah. One... And and to not just unload. Yeah. You know, just pop, 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 and just pop and then, and take and then off. run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Since May, four people have had their vehicles stolen at gunpoint in that same area in Louisiana. Oh, geez. But, uh, All right, here's a question. Kay. Would you have stopped with one shot? Or would you got like that's, a pop, that's pop, a pop, thing. pop, a couple I, shots it, to get him down? It depends on the situation. I, I'm i thinking what he, what he did. It worked. Can't can't fault that guy for yeah. anything. He and it sounded like he kind of had thought about this before and and executed his his plan, which is goes to prove that you know that's you need to be thinking about stuff like that and what ifs and how you how you'd react. But um, I would think that it would be more reactive to rip off a few shots. A few shots, yeah. Um, I mean, what are the chances that you'd hit the target? first shot i mean you never know and we and don't how, know how we don't far, know how far, far yeah I'm, and, in my mind i'm thinking they're like pretty far like I yeah don't know. if if he if he if it's fired close. one shot and real like hey i connected i'm getting out of here you know well yeah yeah i mean you shoot to stop not to kill right or hurt or maim so right he yeah shoots the guy and the guy maybe falls down eh, i'm hit yeah then he runs in i mean we don't know if it was Bang and run. Yeah. Yeah. So I, maybe the guy was being uh, responsible. Shot. Well, and the shot kid, to stop. The kid he shot was standing by his own car, so he probably didn't want to put any bullet holes in his own car. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> oh, hang on. Can you move over? Just <laughs> if, if he was yeah. shooting at their car, it would have been riddled. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway, I thought that was pretty interesting. T- timing on the, on this one is probably key, but I I suspect that maybe the guy was just responsible. One shot. Yeah. Put him down. Well, I'm gone. The yeah. thing is, he was moving to safety. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He he did everything threw the keys, right. ran be- which distracted behind a, a car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then he shot, and then he ran into the house. I yeah. imagine so. it'd be up over the top of the car. Uh, well. You, or around the corner or whatever. Uh, but, up underneath or on the side, yeah, it's hard but to he say. Was, but he, but he was shooting he I'm, was shooting and moving. I'm guessing and I, we don't know anything about this guy, but I'm guessing he's had some training yeah. also. Oh yeah. And you know, maybe maybe he's even if he was law enforcement they probably would have said something. Yeah, but he yeah. could be ex military or, or just just a guy like us that has been to classes and has trained and practiced and thought about things. But uh, shot to the neck, though. That's. Uh, I'm uh, guessing he wasn't aiming for the neck. Yeah, I'm but I mean, shoot him right in the neck. Watch this. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, you miss those arteries. Uh, yeah, you got a, a trachea. Oh, there's anything the in the neck. Injuries. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. surprised the guy was able to get away and get his grandma to. Well, the, the other accomplices guy. Yeah. picked up his grandma. Yeah. There you go. But anyway, maybe she was story. maybe she was down the street on the corner waiting for her new car, and they <laughs> yeah. rolled up and yeah. were like, yeah. her Where, new "Where's car. my car? You promised. <laughs> <laughs> Just get in and shut up." <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, it, it yeah. speaks volumes for uh, training and having a gun with you. Not not to mention, well, it doesn't even matter what the caliber was. Yeah. But it, it also, as I've noticed in most of these stories. Uh, uh, criminals once they get hit, they they kind of lose the will to continue yeah. on. It's not worth there's it. For resistance, them. it seems like uh, they give up pretty quick. Not always. Yeah. You know, you got you got the guys, you know, banging on the door, or banging, breaking a window, and they have a gun in their face with somebody yelling at them, "I'm going to shoot you," and they keep coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Till they're dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, so anyway, great great story. Yeah, I thought it was yeah, pretty good. Thanks for getting that. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, so well done. we do have some listener feedback. Okay. We have listeners. <laughs> we have I I thought we were just doing this for fun. We have four <laughs> four listeners. You always wondered why there were these I don't get out much. What are microphones? these microphones? What are these fuzzy things <laughs> attached to your phones? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Jared C writes in, he says, Hello guys, this message is for Taco. 
What is the cartridge overall length for your 500 Smith & Wesson loads with the 700 grain wad cutter bullets? Those are those massive. Yeah. Yeah, and we made a run of those and yeah. they're like, you could do some crazy deep hollow points. But anyways, uh, he says, I don't have any cast right now. And I'm, and basically he's making a an ammo, a custom ammo. Well, he's, he, there's a guy on Etsy. Yes. Who makes talking with custom ammo Idaho cases. That makes ammo boxes. And and mm. I oh, guess he wood. No, no, they're 3D printed. Oh, okay. Yeah, they and, actually look pretty nice. Yeah, and they look like they lock together. Like when you stack them, mm -hmm. that they kind of interlock and everything. They're they're pretty pretty nice looking. But this guy, hey, I talked to yeah. Jared. That's why I know. But uh, yeah, he said he he just needs some specs on the cartridge with that and then, massive and then he's gonna make me some yeah cool yeah. so he said I, I sketched up the initial specs for this uh 500 smith and wesson case for this and the guy will modify it for the final design check out his stuff looks really nice thanks and so the answer to that is 2.295 inches so okay give or take give or take a little bit it does depend on brass length do you remember the name of the place on etsy i don't i can't remember and it's on my phone and yeah, my it's busy. No, you got a fuzzy thing on it. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. anyways, and I, I did email back that information to Jared C. Good. All right, the next one is from Mike in Pennsylvania. And he says, Taco, I took another deep dive into the Aquila, Aguila. Aguila. It says it's a, there's a Q, but he's, and I think it is Aguila. It is so, Aguila. Zinc bullet research and found the following. This report is from a medical examiner police lab but it shows the bullet composition and performance in the real world and yes out of a high point <laughs> interesting wow so they just ticked all your boxes anyways if someone's interested in that then i could send them e email us and i can forward the link but it was a pdf of that information huh. so cool. and then kevin c man there's a lot of c's here so kevin c writes in and says taco i'd love to hear about terminal ballistics of lead versus zinc with the high higher velocity and harder bullet what difference would it make in ballistic gel or a game animal hmm. so i have the big question that is the big question i and we do have some thoughts but that will be part of the topic so we'll basically we we did some testing but it's just initial load testing i like to throw some in the 223 and see what it does on rabbits yeah that'd be, like that. that'd be cool and i yeah, I need to get a zinc, not zinc, a steel mold for 223, but I do have some 223 bullets that I did cast out of an aluminum mold that mm -hmm. is not recommended to do because it will... It's hard on them. It's really hard on them, so... Gotcha. All right, and then Kevin C. continues, and he says, Jason, when I was a kid in the late 60s or early 70s, I went bike camping with some friends. Nice. One of the guys had hammock tents we used. I think his dad was military, and he got them in the PX. Huh. I, su I suspect they were Vietnam issue. Oh, interesting. Cool. They had a roof, mos mosquito net sides, zippers, huh. etc. Don't remember if they were enclosed with canvas, too. Your favorite, Kevin. Kevin C. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Didn't That's know we cool. had a favorite, but yeah, now it we was do. it was probably they did like uh, they were called jungle hammocks, hmm. and that's probably what it was that they were using. That's cool. Uh, I didn't see Forrest Gump using one, so uh, yeah. so yeah. The I mean, documentary. In, in the documentary. You've, just, you've, you've just been debunked, Kevin. But <laughs> you, your memory has failed you. It didn't really happen. No, I didn't see Forrest <laughs> using one uh -uh. in the documentary. Right, yeah. so. Uh -huh. All right, and then this one is from our favorite flexible person. Ben D? Ben D. <laughs> yeah, so Ben D writes in and says, Hey dudes, I have two questions regarding the zinc bullets. First, have we seen evidence I wonder if of his last name is Dover. <laughs> <laughs> ben D. Dover? <laughs> Just Ben. Just Ben. Ben. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Out of the documentary, Fletch. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I got gotcha. you. Following you now, Okay, <laughs> so... <laughs> Bendy says, hey dudes, I have two questions regarding zinc bullets. First, have we seen ev any evidence in the rifles of zinking the bores? Kind of mm. like what Hopefully we'll lead, get lead, lead, lead deposits, yeah. yeah. Second, are they still safe for steel targets or do they rebound or fragment back toward the shooter? Do they damage the plates? Q 
keep it coming. This zinc stuff is really intriguing. Mm -hmm. Now, Bendy, for the topic today, we will have some of those answers. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Dun, dun, dun. All right, and that's what we have for listener feedback. Cool. All right. Well done. And uh, I compliment you on your enunciation. Talk well, thank you. You've done well. Excellent. Shall we move into what we did with guns? Yeah. Yes. Jason, what did you do with guns? I'll start. I'm actually... Right now, in the process, handcrafting... Zinc bullets. No. <laughs> oh, disappointed. Two double-barreled shotguns. Oh, not disappointed. What? It's true. Handcrafting. Yes. That's what I do, Stan. Are you a gunsmith? You, I don't you, know you are. Why can't I, I be? Don't, well, you haven't received the requisite training. <laughs> well, I, he's not a gunsmith, but he's a gun manufacturer. Oh. I'm a holster smith. Okay. So you're serious about this. Uh, yeah. Uh, they're, what does it entail to... Is it black powder? No, they will shoot rubber bands. Oh. Uh, 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 my okay. grandson is all right. two. Old. Now I'm all disappointed. I'm thinking <laughs> he's like going to be... Oh, where'd he get these barrels? Yeah, you know? that would be awesome. Because there's a lot of work they're, that goes into it. wood dowels yeah, with okay. notches I carve on the ends of them to hold the rubber bands. So when you're loading, they don't come off and snap your fingers. My grandson will be two on Monday. No, that's great. And so start him early. That's these great. are his first Yay. guns. Yeah. <laughs> Jason's making a shock. It's your grand for your grandson? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I need to make one for my, my granddaughter. Yeah. Maybe should. I uh will steal I, your plans. I have patterns. Yeah. Do you really? Yeah. Okay. I, I have been making these for years for with my own kids as they were growing up. Okay. And then as I had like nephews and stuff as they're growing up and this is like what I give them. When that's awesome. Kid, no, that's really they cool. Get, they get two rubber band guns, and then they get a pack of like army men or cowboys and Indians, and you set them up on both sides, and you take turns, and mm. whoever knocks down the other guys all first that Sounds wins. fun. I, I need to get a... a, a that's like what we do with air guns. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with the, yeah, with sure. the scouts or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, it, my, it actually is really fun. It is. My granddaughter will be three, and but so... My I nephew is getting a pack of... Safari animals. Awesome. So he it will be able to go on, on safari. African safari. What's the firing mechanism? A clothespin? Or yes. A, clothes so, pin, so one yeah. on each barrel, basically. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I don't get fancy with the roller ones. Uh, and, shooting yeah. a whole bunch. Yeah. Just two's good enough. Exactly. Then it makes them work on their aim. There you go. Other than that, I had some really interesting guns come through the shop last week. Have any of you heard of a Lionheart? Yes, I have. Really? <laughs> From a me. holster maker told me about it <laughs> earlier this week. I see. So I, what is the devil? It, it's the best way I can describe it. it it's a new company. Uh -huh. That was just recently purchased from some by somebody else. They're in Washington State, but being or they were in Washington State. Now they are either being moved to or are in Georgia. But it is the best way I can describe it is if you took like a Sig P226 and bred it with a 1911. That's kind of the aesthetics that you get from it. It's a steel frame gun, uh -huh. very lightweight, so it's some kind of alloy, um, but it wasn't a super heavy steel frame gun. Hammer fired, double single action, but it the thing that was really unique about it is it, it has a decocker sort of, mm -hmm. so when the hammer's back, you just push it with your thumb and it decocks. Mm. <laughs> that it's, seems it, weird. <laughs> it's really weird. And and the trigger pull after you've decocked it is is kind of odd too. It's not it's not a bad trigger pull. It's just weird because you you kind of feel it pull through the double action. There's like a little catch, yeah, almost. And then it hits the the single action, and it's a pretty decent single action. But so you said they were double. It's a uh, double single double action. stack. No double single. Um, no, like magazine. Oh, I believe wise. they are double. Yeah, it is a double stack magazine. Okay. So that's the Sig two two six part. Of that. Yeah, and it's got a, a rail, and they were this hmm. one I had come through was what's the caliber? And everything. Kind of like nine the pur purpose nine. of them. Is it I just don't know. Other than it's just it's something just another different. gun, oh, okay. yeah, something unique. That you didn't take it out and shoot it. No, it wasn't mine to shoot. <laughs> this this came from a a guy that does has a training group and 
and stuff. And Jason's almost out of ammo because he hasn't set up his reloading press yet. So, <laughs> yes, he well, has. It's, it's been set up <laughs> several times, and every time I go to use it, it unsets itself up. <laughs> the, and How does that's it that so, Lee Pro One Thousand. Yeah, yeah. Is it, does it not work? It just it it just gives me. You should sell your issues. Lee Pro One Thousand to Stan. I'm sure he, he okay. wants another. I'd give you one hundred and twenty seven dollars for it. That's what I paid for mine. <laughs> Uh, and honestly, there are some idiosyncrasies. That's with that's it. the thing is they're just kind of quirky, and but I don't have the patience. I've done it. thousands. I know, and there's lots of people who have. Yeah, there's lots of people. Who have. Yeah. So, of people who I have. think with those, if you, I just don't you'd want to just get for. one and set it up for one caliber and one load, and just, no, it's, that's it's, all I've tried to do. No, it's really not. <laughs> it's way easier than a, a Dylan 500. I've done. I've run, to set, set it up. I've set Carl's up for yeah. him a, a couple like, of times. The Dylan five. 550 is that what you're yeah 550 about? and i've done the uh you know the 750 650 the, yeah the caliber change is it's 550s yeah is okay. what he has yeah he well he had two of them but uh yeah the pro 1000 hey, it is, works this this episode's about me right now Stan. i know me. i'm sorry <laughs> um another really cool gun that came through was a canic rival that's kind of their new hmm. this gun looks like it is out of the box competition ready hmm. that was kind of looks like it's a purpose-built competition gun. Mm -hmm. I was super impressed with it. Mm -hmm. The trigger on it was, it was amazing. It was, mm -hmm. a, so this is a, another really good customer that I've done a lot of stuff for and she brought it in and I was playing with it. And she's like, yeah, feel the trigger. It's like, wow. I'm like, that's great. I'm mm -hmm. like, what trigger did you put in it? She's like, that's the factory trigger. Yeah. That's the way it came. And it's also set up compensated and you know, bigger mag release and optic ready, and I don't know what they're going for, but they're you know they're not expensive because it's a Canik. They're probably five hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Five, they're under six hundred, I'm guessing. But uh, if I was I was really impressed with it. Yeah, um, nothing fancy. I, I've actually recently watched his video on them, and he loves them. Yeah. Did you watch the whole video? Uh, yeah, probably. Like two hours, really? three hours? Uh, no, I've never, <laughs> seen, yeah. I've, never I, seen, I've never seen a two or three hour one. I've, I've seen an hour. <laughs> he does the tabletop. Sometimes they're a little longer. I've tried to watch two oh, videos. I love him, his stuff. And I am like, no, too long. He's great. He just did one on the dagger, the PSA dagger. Huh. They'll, I'll bet they sell out of daggers just because of what he says. Yeah. And he's that big. and. Oh, I know he is. Yeah. He just, I know he is. He just his videos are Has he ever really come long. and done a holster with you? No. No? Okay. No. At one point, I contacted him or tried to for mm -hmm. something. I can't remember what it was. Um, never even responded. Is that right? Yeah. Um, he's pretty big now. Right in the beginning. When we I were don't doing... care. <laughs> <laughs> that, Go ahead. I don't care how big you are. That's just rude. Oh, he probably just didn't get down to it. He, he gets a ton of stuff. He doesn't sure. even look at his own emails. Really? No. no I'm sure. <laughs> I, I don't know how he does everything he does. Last what what do you got least, there in your hands? So... We, we spent a little bit of time over at Mark's house mm -hmm. the other day, helping him kind of go through some stuff he wants to get rid of and that. He's got this kel Sub-2000. Mm -hmm. You guys know I like the Sub-2000, but I currently don't own one. I actually I sold mine to you, Mark. Oh, <laughs> I thought you said you had one already. This is not the one. Okay. No. Well, no. I have Mark's other one. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm selling that for him. I see. This one I think I'm buying from Mark. This is actually... How much are you going to buy it for? I don't know yet. We're working that out. I'll do that plus one dollar. Okay. Oh. This is... This is a limited edition. Oh. M-series, M-carbo sub-2000 in 9mm with... That takes the Glock 19 mags. So, I, I just briefly tried to do a little bit of research on it. M-carbo is military carbine brotherhood they make aftermarket parts they make aftermarket competition parts and stuff like that hmm. so this thing has all their stuff on it what did we say we we didn't like the, the right sight in, in the back this part that would have yeah, yeah. Little, they have a little nub in the back that, that catches it the, catches the hearing protection if you yeah. use the big muffs but that's not unusual for a lot of rifles yeah. but, that, anyway, yeah. so this thing's got their competition trigger in it. It's got a compensator on it, extended mag release. It The big drawback to the Sub-2000 is if you put an optic on it, you can't fold it mm -hmm. closed, which is yeah. kind of the cool thing about it. Mm -hmm. This has a rail mount that flips out of the way, 
when you put when, when you, you fold, fold it. it. Yeah, that and is it's cool. got an, an extended charge handle. The trigger guard is metal instead of plastic. It's got a coating on it's, the buffer tube. It's a part. it's a rubber it's, not, it's a rubber boot, I think. Yeah, that, but it's still yeah yeah it kind of shields your face a little just, bit more. It's just cool. It is, <laughs> and the trigger's good. Did you it have is. Lee? Uh, did he have Lee? Teflon the bolt. It looks. No, I don't think we've done anything to it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But anyway, yeah, that is cool. So I'm I'm talking with Mark about the the last time I asked him how much he wanted for it. He said 19 cents. Talk I'll give him 20. Him. So it's a dollar 19. Dollar <laughs> 19. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. So anyway, I think this is cool. I will probably end up with it. Um, yeah. Just because I, I like them, and there's a lot more to like with that one. Yeah, that one has a lot of cool features. The fact that it has the flipping red you can dot, put a red dot on and it. you can still fold it, yeah, yeah. That, that makes it nice. Well, it, we'll have to see you know what the offers are on it. Who uh, who bids the highest? Whatever. It's a, it's a closed bid, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Just text, text him today, say $1. Jason's bid plus a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> Close bid. Yeah. Anyway, let's now we're going to talk about what you guys did with guns, and that's more or less going to be our topic. Yeah. So we had our range day, aka what'd you call it, Stan? Bro day. Bro day. Actually, it was more like a family day for me because remember I brought my daughter. Ellie oh, yeah. came. Hmm. Yeah, I brought my son. Yeah. And Evan was there. And Evan was there. And part of the family. He's and like, uh, he's like <laughs> part of the full led taco family. Yeah. 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 And and also your friend. Uh, oh yeah. What was Kenny. His, Kenny. It was a different Kenny. Different, not yeah. Eli Kenny. Just the yeah, other Kenny. different Kenny. Hmm. Yeah, we was had... it Letter Kenny? <laughs> no. No. Okay. Yeah. So we we did some. To be fair, we did a lot of him. testing. I had a lot of my my truck was loaded up, and I didn't shocking. I didn't even get like half of the testing done. It was <laughs> shocking. But I had a ton of testing actually. Yeah, quite, you had quite a bunch a bit too. As well. So where do you want to start? I All mean, right, let's let's go with the. Uh, First, we went ahead with your Mosin Nagant. The Mo- <laughs> that I, was awesome. <laughs> I bought this Mosin Nagant from Taco. It's uh, sort of an heirloom uh-huh. now. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's actually a really nice uh, Mosin Nagant. And we, we loaded up some 135. You had a mold for the 135 yeah, AK round. Gas checked. Yeah, the mold. I was going to yeah. mention the mold okay. model. It's the 314-SP. 129. So I think it's a 129 grain, mm-hmm. but it has a gas check shank, so you put a gas check on. They're about adds. 135. Yeah. Uh, and gas, then powder gas, coated. So. Yeah, powder coated gas check. So these were powder coated gas check bullets. I made them like a long time ago, probably mm-hmm. like five years ago or something. Mm-hmm. And it was for and a they friend. They didn't spoil? <laughs> they didn't spoil, yeah. Huh. And it was it was for a friend, a Russian friend, who has one of the M44, the short Mosin Nagants. Mm. And he was complaining about how you know it, it hurt his shoulder, hurt my shoulder. So he's not a real Russian. <laughs> <laughs> he is a real Russian. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, he he wanted something that was a little bit less recoil for him and his wife to shoot, and so I I, I made these for him and loaded it up. And now the load was was actually quite unique. It's a, it's in an that interesting load, right? We're using red dot. 13 and, and a half, shotgun 13, powder. Yeah, 13 and a half grains of red dot. Um, 13 grains. Was it 13? Yeah, 13 uh, grains. Yeah. 13, 13, uh, 13 and a half. 13.5 is not going to, it's not going to make him, it's not going to be dangerous. <laughs> it won't hurt it. Either. It'll be fine. No, but red dot. Uh, and I had uh, some leftover red dot that I discovered. Huh. And so. <laughs> it, it was ancient history red dot. It is. It's, it's wow. historical. It's antique. Yeah. Antique. He used Antique, antique powder. powder. Uh-huh. Yeah. Smelled okay. Uh, How did the it taste. The, the, uh, it was very delicious. Okay. Uh, it had a, a, a crisp, uh, sort of fruity finish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. So my father-in-law gave me some some uh, red dot powder, and it's in the cylindrical cans uh, with sort of a plastic cork in it instead uh-huh. of a instead a of screw. a yeah. twist top. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but the, these loads were, uh, you know, we were just doing it to plink with, and I loaded up. Uh, 25 with the AK bullet and 25, and they were point uh, three one fours for the yes. bore, right? Yeah, and uh, and then I loaded up some 308s. Three, the three three one fours plated bullets, plated mm-hmm. just some. Uh, I think they're like thirty thirty bullets. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they were sort of square nose for flat nose. Yeah, so 150 grams, 30 30. But uh, 
the the three one fours were were great. You he was very accurate with it. I didn't so Stan kept missing, <laughs> and so I was I, wondering if the load was bad or yeah, something. So he shot it. So I I took the rifle and you know hit I was hitting the still targets at <laughs> hundred yards. I do better with scopes. Be, yeah. Because I didn't. Well, I didn't have my glasses. But and it was it, you it, were hitting that two, load two hundred yards worth. Yeah, worth I think so. It, and like it that. was. It was shooting good. Ten so. inch plate, ding in the plate, and then I put the the three oh eight in, <laughs> and it's the, it was just tumbling down the barrel. I I'd <laughs> shoot. Stan shoots. And it's like, hey, you're you're like really low, like fifteen feet well, low. Well, yeah. and then in the next shot, dude, you were like like twenty feet to the yeah. left, <laughs> and then just like it was. It was, yeah. it was that so bad. In short, it was crazy. Three oh eight is less than three one four, and the bore needed a. Three, at, least a three, three, at least three, three, at least three twelve or three twelve something, something yeah. like that. Uh, it was this just is, an experiment. Is this all with the Mosin? Yeah, okay. yeah, all with the Mosin. Okay, um, but it, I was surprised how bad the, yeah. those plated bullets. Did. Yeah, like I, I don't think it had anything to do with the bullet. bullet. It was just the size. Because well, I've yeah, shot, no, I, no I mean, that's what I'm saying. I've shot those. How bad it. the plated bullet yeah. did the undersized the plated undersized bullet. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I've shot those through a three hundred blackout, and they do just fine. Yeah, yeah, at, at slower speeds, you don't want to. Uh, shoot them too fast because they're plated. Hmm. But uh, it, it is funny how different the bore is. You know, yeah. I, I just assumed. Well, I, I knew that it was. It might be undersized. Seven six two by fifty four Russian is not actually seven six two. Actually, I think they do it to the lands instead of the, the grooves. Whatever it is. Yeah. But, so that was one thing. What else did we? So do? we took that same bullet mm-hmm. and we loaded it in the AK, so the seven six two by thirty nine mm-hmm. cartridge. Mm-hmm. And I was using, let's see if I have the load data. Um, I don't have the load data with me right now, but uh, it was kicking it out. It was IMR 4198, mm-hmm. and we were shooting it out about 2,000 feet per second. And when I was chronographing it, it was like I got duplicate, like 2,000 and then 2,000. Yeah. So I just stopped, <laughs> you know, to get the exact same chronograph numbers. It's like doesn't happen very often yeah. so that was a sign of good luck for this, <laughs> this cartridge but anyways that that same bullet you know 135 grain going at about 2,000 feet per second that shot really well also the in the AK and the and SKS I we shot SKS. it in the SKS mm-hmm. but one of the the things that we tested that was so that was the first time I'd taken my Palmetto AK out I've had it for what, about a year yeah or something probably Anyways, that uh, the AK had issues. Oh, really? Yeah. At first, I thought it was the ammo because, you know, reloaded ammo, whatever. That's sure. what you would assume first for a new gun. Mm-hmm. But I think the extractor was out of spec. Mm. And so it would fail to go into battery like an, an inch, like wow. back. So I think the, some is just too much, what would you call it, like pressure to, to, to close. Hmm. So... Yeah, it, it was almost as if the spring wasn't springy enough to to slam it home. Mm-hmm. It was just getting caught. Yeah. So that one, I I called Palmetto and they just created an RMA. So they nice. prepaid label, shipped it back to them. So I just got to wait and see. So kudos to Palmetto for paying. Taking care of it. Yeah, paying yeah. for shipping back and hopefully, like, okay, hopefully they don't take too long to get get it back to me. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. I like it, but yeah. it, it's really a nice AK. Uh, I was disappointed. Other, yeah, other than the perform. fact that it didn't yeah. actually shoot anything. Yeah. Well, it would shoot, oh, and, then it, and then it would hang up. Yeah. sometimes. Yeah, okay. so you'd so, have to rack and, it. And it, worse. it did that with the factory steel cased ammo too. So I that's had some two, yeah, the some yeah. Tula. So that's where we. That's why I knew that it yeah. was some okay. an issue. Yeah. So we took that same load and shot it in the SKS. Mm-hmm. And that was a hoop. I, I actually kind of miss the I, SKS. I like my SKS. Man, that made me kind of miss having an SKS. Mm-hmm. I had be, uh, a couple Norinkos with the pig sticker on, you know, <laughs> before. And that's, I, what, that's what that one was. The Norinko. Yeah, I I saw. Because, <clears throat> I'd well, put a blade you on put, it. You put a Yugo blade in it. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of kind of fun. Yeah, I, I actually... I like the Yugo blade way better. Do you really? It I looks like, cool. I was going to say I like the, the, the pig sticker because the blade doesn't stick up. Oh, uh, okay. But, yeah. So I've got both. I, I think I it looks it. better with that nice <laughs> wide blade, you know? I, I, I Yeah, I've been meaning to uh, sharpen it, you know, so I'd have... Uh, Oh yeah, so, so something, if, like, if I need, needed to, I, I don't know, Stan. Something. You might hurt yourself with that. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I'll might. stick a cork on the end of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, but yeah, I actually have two of those. You have 
to uh, I, SKSs? Uh, yeah, I gave one of them to my father-in-law, and uh, so he's got it over. Oh, so you have one. In Colorado, yeah. But, I was going to uh, say, if, if you have one, we could arrange some kind of a trade. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I uh, probably have something that you need. Yeah, but. yeah. But it's... Uh, like the uh, Russian version of, uh, early version of the M- yeah, M1 Grand. It takes stripper of. clips mm-hmm. and it goes into an internal magazine in 10 rounds. And you know, I've had everything on it. I've had the stock, the folding stock, the 45 yeah. round mags, the adapter, this and everything. And I've put Just it back put it pretty back much to stock. Factory. I've got a, a, a different hand, hand guard on it, but that's it. Yeah, when when I had mine, I kind of modded it out and stuff. And you had to be careful with the 922R uh, mm-hmm. compliance Rules, stuff. Yeah. But. Anyways, like if I got another one, which I think I may, ask, I should get it before they get too expensive. <laughs> but well, you know, I've I've I, I like that, and I like the uh, Mini Thirty as well. Yeah, Mini Thirties are nine hundred dollars now. Ah, I know, and they take weird mags. They do, and so it, it, it's, yeah. If they were, has if, some weird mags. If they or, had like a made it take like AR mags how, or something. Yeah, these, or or even AK mags. AK mags. Yeah, why it. wouldn't they do that? Yeah. Anyway, so I've actually looked at the Mini 30, um, but I still like the SKS. Yeah. I don't shoot a lot of Sen 6 2 by 39 But just ha- shooting, uh, you know, iron sights, military mm-hmm. rifles, the, the SKS was fun. Mm-hmm. I think we need to zero it, though. Wasn't it shooting a little to the, was it left or right? Oh, no, I thought it was just low or high. Um, oh, maybe, I actually maybe have the tool to do oh, it. Oh, I was going to say, I, I ordered the tool after shooting on... That week, or yeah, yeah, last yeah. week, no kidding. So it's coming today. I have the tool, uh, and I've actually shot it on uh, paper plates. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. No, it was my AK that was shooting to the left. Okay, yeah. Because this this one will do can size groups on a on a paper plate. Well, you know, yeah, at a hundred yards. Back when I had good eyes, yeah, and if I had my glasses on, it might, yeah. might make a difference. And but the SKS has the zero at uh, three hundred meters, I think. That's if you put it up on the ramp. It, it, it's it's zero out to uh, so that's a combat. It's you. It's the universal. Oh, okay. Put it up on that ramp, or you put it down in, and it's zeroed at. Oh, the okay. So oh, nice. It, usually, yeah. I leave it at that combat um, uh, setting. So okay, yeah. The, the triggers are <laughs> really interesting. Yeah, and this one's stamped. The trigger is stamped. It's not um, the greatest, but it's not bad. You know, it actually has a, a lot of travel and sort of a catch just before it fires. Yeah. So it's almost like a two-stage. <laughs> yeah, you could call it your two-stage <laughs> SKS trigger. Yeah. So anyway, it was it oh, was a lot of fun. And then, then alongside those same, you know, same cartridge, same mags, like the AK mags, mm-hmm. I t- brought that PTR-32. Oh, yeah. But I forgot the Magpul mag, and I had an old Bulgarian steel mag, mm-hmm. surplus mag. Did it work? It wouldn't. It w- didn't work. It would not feed from that mag. And so that has me totally second guessing if, if I should just sell that thing. The PTR. Yeah, mm. PTR 32 that takes, you know, it's basically a miniature PTR 91 yeah. that takes AK mags, but if it only takes, if, if it's made to shoot with the, uh, what do you call it, the um, Magpul mags, yeah. then it's not worth it. Hmm. Because I have so many old steel, like yeah. Bulgarian, Korean, all kinds of old steel mags. Well, now I'm I'm looking at the the PSAK. It actually had a pretty good trigger on it. I thought. Oh yeah, it did. That was one thing. Really it did good. have a good trigger. I, I was surprised. Yeah, it's so. got a Tapco in there, and it it works great. Yeah. So, so yeah, if you're thinking about getting a PTR32, I'd say um, you should buy one. Dollar wise, what's from, the difference from Taco? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> no, yeah. I would steer clear from it. Unless I should I should contact P- PTR and just see if they can fix that yeah. or or if it's just a design yeah. flaw or, or maybe it was that particular man yeah too so so um, but I don't know I think I'd, I it, the PTRs are really cool they really are cool. we do, now we did shoot the PTR ninety one and we were shooting my old what was it the the loads with the one sixty grain bullets where I pulled the tips out mm-hmm. yeah. And we were we were hitting steel targets way out there. Hmm. I think uh, did I hit the five hundred? I was think that, you yeah, did. I, I, I think I, I might have hit it. You know, a blind squirrel get a nut every now and again. And uh, that one shoots really nice. It does. I like that PTR ninety one. The recoil is with that roller delayed mm-hmm. blowback or whatever. It's that action is is really pleasant to shoot. It, it's kind of it's a slim, compact. Sort of trimmed down gun. The tr- the trigger takes a little getting used to. I yeah, thought, the triggers. But, but it was good. It's yeah. not horrible, uh-huh. but it's just different. Yeah, 
So we we shot some of my FMJ loads we, there as well. But that one was from the start, like you could, it was right on. Yeah, and you had the uh, the original mags with that one. It uses the. Oh yeah. So I I had one crusty crusty mag from I I posted a picture on Instagram and said, hey, this might take some elbow grease. And we, we cleaned it up, or I cleaned it up, and then uh, I polished it up, and I had I took it to a, a buddy who said, oh, I might be able to polish it even better. Mm-hmm. And so he polished it a little bit. The thing worked flawless. I didn't even use some of the nice-looking mags. We just used the ugly mag. So and, you wanted that to be sort of your bellwether, see if it worked right. Uh, yeah, I wanted to see, hey, if the crappy d- does the crap, the good yeah, ones will do. If the crappy yeah. one works, then of course the good ones will sure, work. Yeah. So, anyways. Did, now, did we shoot any... Uh, zinc through that one? We did. We did not. I so I did bring the zinc 308s, mm-hmm. but we ran out of time. Yeah. Was, oh no, so kidding. Much. Well, I want to back up just a little bit, real real quick. I shot some of your 135, the bunny farts through my a, uh, AR10 or excuse me, a, uh, 300 blackout pistol. Oh yeah, how and was I, that? Perfect. Yeah, it worked fine. I need to get a sight on it. Remember, I had the iron sights. And oh again, yeah. I didn't have my glasses, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think I'm just going to put a red dot or something on that one as yeah. a PDW. Yeah, that'd um, be fun. And, and those things, uh, we used 1680 in that. No, you, so you're talking was about, it, it wasn't the bunny farce. It was the 225 grain taco bullets. Oh, the taco like bullets, the, yeah. The big, long, heavy Yeah, ones. so yeah. they were uh, subsonic and... Uh, those, were, yeah, you were, you were hitting stuff, and then you shot it with your bolt action, too. Yeah, exactly. And so it cycled in the... In the in the pistol in the and in the bolt action and in the bolt action. <laughs> so that's actually a fun bullet. Uh, it's pretty cheap to to reload and doesn't use a lot of powder and, and yeah, uh, you're just what at what were we at ten and a something, half something like that. Yeah, yeah. but uh, you know three three hundred blackout. I'm I'm liking it more and more. Um, yeah, it's know. it's a very efficient cartridge for using cast bullets. Yeah. Yeah, you use a little bit more lead, but then powder-wise, you're only using like 10, 11 grains. Yeah, and uh, I wish I'd had my suppressor on it to see how that. Yeah, that and went, then if you're using pistol powders, you're using very minimal. Like I think it's somewhere around four grains of trail boss with the like bunny that. fart bullet. Yeah, the yeah. 135. And what yeah. I was going for was functionality to to make sure I hadn't uh, tested that gun, so that worked real well. So moving on to the zinc. Yeah, testing. we got to hit the zinc. Some Did really you get remarkable. to shoot some of the 45 yeah, 70 I zinc? Remember, and the 44. Oh, both you of were them. there for both. Yeah, nice. Uh, so I think I got a couple of the water jugs too. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I think we have footage. I need to spend hours <laughs> in in putting stitching together a video on on the zinc. Yeah, it was I'm, cool. I'm currently on strike again. YouTube gave me another channel strike. So I have two, so I can't upload for like two weeks or something. But Unless you put it on Rumble. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking about doing that. I'm thinking about maybe even doing a Rumble exclusive and then have a trailer on YouTube saying, hey, if you want to see this video, go, go to Rumble. Yeah. Yeah. But you got but, some really remarkable results, I thought. Yeah, the, it was cool. So we, we took some 500 grain or some a 500 grain mold uh, that would, well, a mold that would cast 500 grain lead bullets lead. and it cast the zinc ones out at 291 grains. And with, I had two different loadings. We had 35 grains of IMR 4198. And I did use quick load to run through the scenario scenarios to see what I could get like the most velocity with the limited case capacity in the lightweight bullet. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the heavier or the slower powders, just the bullet's so light that you, you have to use a faster powder to get it going faster, mm-hmm. which is opposite of what you would normally do like all the you know long range cartridges you use really slow powders mm-hmm. well you've got to have enough pressure there yeah uh, the pressure for it to, to be efficient and having a straight wall the yeah. 4570 yeah you got to get that fat they're cool looking bullets they're huge yeah. so and they're crunchy they are crunchy <laughs> which we we bit on to yeah you know they sure. are actually crunchy it's weird but the in a an 1895 the uh Marlin 1895 SPL. Yours is a Remington Marlin. No, right? mine, mine was a. Yeah, so yeah. I had the Remlin, and I think Kenny had his Remlin also, but gotcha. he had his reworked, and it was really smooth. Yeah. And he had the suppressor on it. Yeah. So it came out to, with 35 grains of IMR 4198, it was 1600 feet per second. So not bad for a huge bullet that takes up, you know, so much <laughs> of the case inside. Yeah. And then with. The other load, the 36 grains, then it was about, it added about 50 feet per second. So 1650 feet per second. Gotcha. And then I did have some accidental loads 
which I loaded of 36 grains of IMR 4895. Which is slower. It's right? slower. And those things were only going, they are just putting out at around just over 1,000 feet per second. No kidding. So 1,100, I I'm think. I'm surprised to make that much, that much difference. Yeah, it's, So it's the other crazy. one was what? 4895? Yeah, IMR <clears throat> 41, uh, 4198 and then 4895. Gotcha. So I had discovered, you know, my mistake in the loading process. And then I just figured, oh, slow, slower powder is going to be totally fine anyways. Mm -hmm. But I did also run it through quick load and I, yeah, I was right. You it was okay. way, way, way so too slow. So all of this for science. It's yeah. And, and so we, we shot, <clears throat> we actually shot some steel plates with that uh, pretty fast moving, you know, 1600 feet, 1650 feet per second load. We shot some steel plates with that, now, uh, the shoot, hardened steel. I was going to say, did you shoot this car we didn't, the car we didn't shoot low, the, low carbon? Yeah, we didn't shoot the mild, mild steel okay. plates just because time and yeah, yeah. everything. But it did not really damage the the, the hardened steel plates, like mm -hmm. the AR500 steel. Just put a dent in it? Just like a, I mean, kind of like if you were to shoot it with a, you know, a jacketed, a heavy, mm -hmm. a heavy forty-five seventy jacketed load would probably do about the same thing. Yeah, but not not really much damage. It looks like it just it the hard zinc just shatters. Yeah, and fragments. It fragments. Uh, I was going to say it's not real scientific. We didn't set up actual. Yeah, it would be and stuff really like cool to, if we had say like a you know a slow motion camera, high high frame rate <laughs> camera to. Yeah. To actually see the bullet hit and fragment, but it, 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 an interesting thought, you know, guys do a lot of uh, they'll put up like drywall and two by fours just to see what these bullets would do, how they would react to. Yeah, that was like Noah's science balls. project. Yeah, there you yeah. go. It'd be interesting to do that. There are a lot of things we can do with these. Yeah, uh, test how much they fragment. And what I want to do is penetrate. take two of the same, like one a hard cast lead bullet and then mm -hmm. one of them a zinc bat zinc bullet mm -hmm. and shoot it into the ballistic gel mm -hmm. do you and have some i do have oh, no kid. yeah I, I need to remelt it and oh, gotcha from the last project forever ago <laughs> but remelt it and just see what they do yeah. obviously the you're going to get higher velocity but i don't think that's going to necessarily mean higher penetration if you take like for example a, a like a 17 hmr it doesn't it seems to dump most of its energy uh, in the first little bit, right? Because mm -hmm. it's really fast and lightweight bullet. But if you take something that's a little bit heavier, you know, like a 22 mag, then you'll get more penetration mm -hmm. out of stuff. A lot of that has to do with surface area yeah. and bullet construction. And the zinc have, with a, a flat flat tip, tip, uh, maybe not hollow. Uh, it'd be interesting to see. Yeah, what, so what the it's are. all guesses until you actually yeah. test it. So there, there's a lot of a lot of material there that we can test and uh, yeah it's, it, it is pretty fascinating it really now is. the other thing is it, we tested with my 44 mag revolver oh yeah a the the mold we mentioned earlier today it's the noa 434-234-rf so it normally cast just short of 240 grain mm -hmm. lead bullet and that one came out at about 143 grains and i had three different loadings with three different powders and Basically, the we, we tested bullseye, power pistol, and unique. Mm -hmm. And I would have the listeners guess which one they thought would be. I was know. just going to say, which one was the fastest? Unique. It was power pistol. Power pistol. Yes. Oh, and it was it was a hefty loaded. I think it was fifteen point two grains of power pistol. That's quite a bit of pistol powder in a in a forty four mag. But you know. Yeah. But yeah, you if you did that with a. a lead bullet you'd probably blow up your gun <laughs> is that right yeah i think so so but you you got your starting points off of mm -hmm. uh, the, the the quick load quick load so that's good yeah and what was interesting is uh sometimes some of them you would in the revolver you'd see a slight uh flattening of the primers versus the 16 inch lever gun the mm -hmm. rossi 92 it rounded uh primers hmm. no signs of pressure at all gotcha so wow. that, was, that was just kind of a, in, an interesting thing i thought it would probably be like the uh the opposite you know since the longer barrel maybe build up pressure more or something anyways yeah that so is interesting the in the fastest load of power pistol we got about 2175 feet per second in the 16 inch and that's crazy because it's a 16 inch 
just yeah. Rossi 92 and 44 mag. Yeah. That thing was screaming out of that. <laughs> yeah. And then pretty cool. in the Ruger, and that one has a long barrel too. It's like a eight, eight inch, inch something like, that. Something like yeah. yeah. The Ruger uh, Super Red Hawk, then it really didn't lose that much velocity. And I think it's because of the the faster pistol powders, mm -hmm. but we are getting 1950 feet per second. That would indicate that it's probably burnt by the time it... Yeah, it, most, it, most it, of it's consumed burnt. Consumed all of the, the and that's, powder. When I was looking at the loads and stuff, I'd look at the percentage of powder burned because you can put oh, your barrel like yeah no you can, in the ballistic estimation and stuff no, what did it say and that? so you, that's what i go for is having a higher percentage of the powder burn sure for that for the shorter but, barrel and then it's and it's, then yeah it's okay for but it still gained velocity with the longer barrel yeah but interesting that was that was really interesting so we shot some milk jugs filled with water and they just it was like shooting it with a high velocity type it was. cartridge it, it uh, really knocked the crap out of it yeah i mean just uh, a couple of the jugs. I'll, I have some. If you guys have Instagram, check it out. I have a, a couple of reels that show some some of the stuff. But one of them, you see the 44 mag. Just it it blows up the jug, but in slow motion, you see that it just splits <laughs> in half. Right in half. Right in half. I'm gonna have to get me the Instagrams. What yeah. is your uh, Instagram handle? It's Do like they know full lead taco full or okay. something like that. Gotcha. Full dot lead dot taco or full lead taco. Gotcha. Anyways, just so they. They know. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. So we have some slow motion footage of that. Then we took those same bullets, the zinc loads with the power pistol, because we wanted the fastest velocity. Mm -hmm. And we took it and shot some mild steel plates that generous Stan provided. It's, and it's part of the uh, testing uh, yeah. facilities. So we took uh, the... the yeah. Thinnest one, which yeah. is what, quarter inch? Yeah, actually, it might have been a little less than that, maybe three sixteenths, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, anyways. So it's thinner stuff. Yeah, so it's, I'll have to major it to see. Mm -hmm. But I, my my thought, or my guess was, I thought for sure it would just blow right through. Mm -hmm. Like, no problem. Yeah. And uh, did you see that? I haven't seen it yet. What, what, what would your guess be? My, my guess would have been on the thin plate, the thinnest mm -hmm. plate. Yeah, the thinnest one. Maybe an eighth of an inch. I, I bet it's not much more than three sixteenths. Uh, I thought it'd go right through it. Yeah. 44 mag, right? 44 mag. I'd expect it to go right through it. So, yeah. In the revolver, we shot it, and it, man, it, it, it almost, <laughs> the back side of the steel plate mm -hmm. bulged out so far, it looked like half the bullet yeah. was so sticking out the back. Was the steel sort of stretching? You could yeah, see the, the striat steel stretched. Striations yeah. on yeah. it. It just hadn't. It just didn't burst through. See, and, and then and if you shoot it with a high velocity round, it just pu punches yeah, right usually through. Yeah, like it usually punches a, right through. Like a uh, wad cutter. Yeah. Yeah. But these are, you know, they do have a little flat nose. Yeah. So I yeah. wonder if that comes into play. If it was a pointy nose, I wonder if it would have blasted through or not. But the the lever gun, same thing, except it just stretched a little further. A little bit further. So, so it means the, it's the just thin, slowing down gradually, probably. So, instead of yeah, it just like through. pop. And then <laughs> just and the other stuff. Uh, well, you never did find any. Yeah, I couldn't find the projectiles. Like if it, so we don't know if it just shattered and whatever, or you know if half of it shattered and half of it didn't, or on, what. On the water jugs, could you see the projectile going in? Or are you going that slow that you, no. you can't see that? Okay. You just see the the milk jugs getting demolished, just, gotcha. yeah, just exploding. So that that's some more uh, fodder for testing too. Uh, yeah, just to see how 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 frangible the stuff is. So if if the listeners have some things that they want us to test, obviously it'll take us a long time to get to it, but. We will take it into consideration. Actually, try to do. Well, it was mentioned stuff. the uh, the barrels. We gotta inspect the barrels. Do you have a barrel? Yeah. Barrels? What I want to do for that is I want to try and get the zinc going like rifle speeds, uh -huh. like jacketed Ooh. bullet speeds. Really. And I have one of those AR tens, the cheap ones from Bear Creek, mm -hmm. and also a Bear Creek three hundred blackout upper and two two three five five six upper. Wow. And I bought those with the sole purpose of shooting them out with zinc and mm -hmm. see, like, how many rounds does it take to shoot them out with zinc or mm -hmm. if... If it does. Or if it does. There's a lot of uh, just, I don't know what you call them, wives' tales of, mm -hmm. of zinc bullets. I, I've read, I've studied a lot online, and one guy on one of the forums was saying, oh, don't shoot zinc. I shot a 1,000 rounds in my revolver and had to replace the barrel. And so part of that... I'm wondering, like, okay, well, what what 
what was wrong with the barrel? Did you just burn out all the rifling? Was mm. the, you know, did you not size it properly? Or so you don't know, and he didn't have any other data to back up or to go with it to, to help you out. So it's sort of uncharted territory. Yeah, really. it is. Um, so I, I probably won't shoot zinc a ton. And I mean, I don't think it hurts to do some, but well, you know, it, 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 I don't want to shoot in some of my really nice rifles, like surplus rifles or something. Sure, until you know what, it, what it's going to do. Yeah. Um, but uh, I imagine it would be, it might be different cleaning, uh, you know, what solvents work on zinc versus lead and yeah, copper. I don't know. You know, it's, it's, there's not a lot out there. But uh. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> shooting these zinc bullets uncoated. <clears throat> un- just They're just straight out. Cast and sized. They look great. They, I love they the, do look really good. I like, like the way shiny they shiny and everything. Yeah, but uh, no, we could test. There's a ton of things to test. But, but yeah, I, I do want to <clears throat> shoot some like in the 308, just in an AR-10 and just I, see how... I would how... imagine going that fast... Well, we talked about the plated bullets spinning apart. You don't think zinc's going to be zinc tougher would, than it, it than would be plated. tougher than plated or even lead. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, but I've heard of people spinning them apart. For yeah, sure. and that might be what, what will happen. <laughs> we don't know, yeah. but we won't know until we try. Yeah. yeah. There you go. And maybe it's the Good crunchiness stuff. of the zinc that's yeah. crunching up a bore. There Who you knows? go. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's also the thing of uh, the the uh, controversy of people saying oh i won't shoot steel oh yeah uh, through through my rifle because it wears it out and i i don't know maybe if you do enough of it it might but uh yeah you're gonna have to, i think you're gonna you know, have to I did, shoot a lot i did read a an article <clears throat> on lucky gunner where they were shooting they are basically burning out ar barrels mm-hmm. and oh, really? doing some tests with yeah, steel cased ammo okay yeah that's what i'm talking about and what what they noticed was that the barrels kind of wore out prematurely with the steel case, but it it was also because it had those had a steel core. Oh, okay. So the steel case demo did have steel core, and so they are thinking that that had something to do with it. Well, the case pertains to the chamber, and the bullet, yeah. the steel bullet, uh, steel core bullet has you know pertains to the barrel. But. Yeah. So I'm not saying that the yeah. steel case had anything to do with the bore. Yeah, just yeah. the fact that the steel case demo had a a steel core. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty ignorant on all of this stuff, so it'll, yeah. it, it is fascinating. If you got time to but to, to look into it, it's you know, really interesting. If, if we're, t- we're talking apocalypse, and so so here's here's maybe some reasons, you know, before knowing any detrimental things to guns, right? Mm-hmm. Why would you choose to shoot zinc bullets, mm-hmm. right? So one is maybe if you, first off, money. So zinc wheel weights, that's usually what gets uh, thrown away or sent back to the recycler so if you have access to wheel weights and you know you sort them you get your zinc and then you get your lead there's probably very few lead ones nowadays but that's that's a free metal that you can turn into bullets here's here's what i'd like to do i'd like you to sit down or i would like to sit down with you and <clears throat> compare the, the the zinc the lead and then purchase bullets maybe plated yeah, copper and, plated and or uh, the regular bullets and list all of the equipment you need for each one because you got to buy a pot, yeah. you got to buy molds, you got to, you know, take the time to do it and everything like that. And in the end, there's going to be a break-even point where one is more economical than the yeah. other. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see that. But yeah, and then it, here, here's in another... an apocalypse yeah. situation. If you have the the pot and everything, that's the way to go. I mean, if yeah. you can't get anything else, well, it's yeah. So <clears> apocalyptic <throat> scenario where you you know it's free, it's available, you can actually do it. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit tougher, mm-hmm. harder to cast than lead. But it's, you can also make them go faster. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So that's another reason why you may consider shooting zinc is if you want something that shoots fast. Mm -hmm. And well, that's why I think the two two three would be really cool. I I think it would be crazy to shoot one of the like a a jackrabbit or something with that forty four mag going, (laughs) you know, twenty two hundred feet per second. That's you wouldn't have much left. Yeah, I don't think if you hit him. Yeah. So so there's you know that reason, and then you know. The properties of zinc, you don't have to coat them. So, or at least I, I don't think you do. I'm not mm-hmm. <laughs> because I think it has some lubricity properties. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to, you just cast and size. So there's a time saving. Oh, you part do have to it. size them though? You do have to size them if they're not the right size. Oh. Okay. So if they cast oversized. I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you, so for the 223, would you, would that be cast oversized? Yeah. You, you need to size that down. Right Probably. Down, 
Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So, you know, there are potential reasons why you'd want to use zinc. And let's say zinc is, is hard on barrels, mm -hmm. right? But let's say with the cost of ammo being a certain price, how cheap can you get an AR-15 barrel? They're pretty cheap. So would the, the cost, you know, you'd say how much to reloading projectiles, jacketed projectiles, how much do they cost in comparison or factory ammo mm -hmm. in comparison oh, to, to free zinc? Mm -hmm. um, how many bullets would you have to shoot of zinc to replace a barrel? I think we had. I think we had to work that out. So, and, and you know, some of these barrels are cheap. You can get, you know, fifty bucks, fifty yeah. to like a hundred bucks. I've seen them so. for less than that on Bear Creek. Yeah. So, and if you're you're buying the barrel with the eye toward shooting zinc, no, so you're not going mm -hmm. for the high accuracy, the you know really precision barrel. Yeah. You can then, compromise that way too. Yeah. So there's there's you know some people might say, oh well, zinc will burn out your barrel and say let's say it's like three thousand rounds. Mm -hmm. Well, if if you have the cost savings of shooting zinc for three thousand rounds, that easily pays for a barrel. Yeah, and there's all, also the time and the satisfaction factor too. Yeah, you can't put a, well. I guess you, each person has to monetize that or or put the the value on the on the uh, satisfaction. I know reloading nine millimeter right now is not that much cheaper than just buying it. Oh, it is. Is it? Yeah. Well, I, I guess the prices have gone up. And I still have the same cost of the the uh, components that I bought before, mm -hmm. but you know the uh, there's satisfaction in doing a lot of that. Yeah, uh, well, and and there are there are specific reasons why you'd want to shoot lead bullets mm -hmm. too. You mm -hmm. know, for like if you shoot steel targets a lot, mm -hmm. then uh, I should do a video on top ten reasons to mm -hmm. shoot cast I, cast I think lead we bullets. Uh, the fr b being so frangible, uh, both lead and uh, presumably zinc. the zinc. It would be interesting to see that too. Yeah, uh, I'd also like to see. Uh, I mean, if you're in a, an apocalyptic situation, um, you know how it would do on body armor. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? So there, there could be a reason for uh, you know uh, a more serious bullet in that situation. But it, it, you know, and it kind of brings up the the primer thing for me too. Is it easier just to buy in stockpile, or you know, even or even go black powder? Or what if you do both? <clears throat> yeah. You know, maybe you, you buy a bunch of primers, but then you take part of that money that you would have bought like a huge load of primers and then maybe you spend a little bit and get some priming compound and mm -hmm. the little <laughs> NOE loader, you know. I, I know. I, I'm intrigued it, by that. It, it, it all depends on the need, you know, for, you know, say there's a guy who makes a lot of money, he would just look at that and laugh and say, oh, people are so stupid. Why? you know, your time's worth more than that. Mm. But what if you're retired and your time is worth not that? <laughs> exactly. You know, or, or you just you, enjoy doing it. Yeah. So it's, it's hard for, you know, you can't really make statements to say that this is bad or this is good because someone might have a purpose for it. Yeah. And reason. So absolutely. And that's probably the case with the zinc bullets. Yeah. Anyway, the, it, it was really fun and uh, we need to do it more. For yeah. Sure. We need, we to, need to do the another range day and so we need to get out and do it some more. And I, what I plan on doing is I have those zinc 308 loads. Mm -hmm. So we need to test accuracy and, you know, see if it's a viable, like, chronograph them. So we get speeds and, because those are big bullets. They're like 300 blackout sized bullets in a 308 case that weigh about like 140 or 150 gra okay. uh, grains, something like that. Huh. So... It's it'll I'm, it'll I'm be interesting. In. I've yeah. got some three oh eights. I, I really want to see how that goes. Or maybe it was a hundred and thirty <clears throat> something grains. Yeah, hundred and thirty two grains. Yeah, you could be looking at three thousand feet of Well, but you can't get that much powder in it. I was gonna say, there. depending so on the powder. You gotta use yeah. it a little bit. It'll Anyways, it gets it gets tricky when you when you look at that stuff. So yeah. but what I wanna do is also keep a track of round count on each of those uppers. Mm -hmm. And then uh that way we can document and then if, if we do need to replace the barrel after a certain amount of firings, then then you can say, well, a barrel costs this much. You have this much in savings from the projectiles. Is that worth it to you? Mm -hmm. So if someone has to pay for zinc, then maybe it's not worth it. Yeah. So anyways. Good stuff. Yeah. So thanks for joining us today for this podcast. Yeah. Any questions, uh, talk, we'll answer them. <laughs> yeah. S send your feedback to concealedtacodudes at gmail.com. And uh, we, we want to thank Jason for being so quiet. We asked him after he, after he did his uh, what he did with guns to be quiet. So thank you, Jason. No, okay. He's, he's okay. Okay. No. <laughs> Jason had to, had to step out. So. <laughs> anyway, uh, 
get out and, uh, and take somebody shooting. Yes. Enjoy the weather. Stay safe. Have Exercise fun. Exercise your Second Amendment rights. I'll be Jason. And be nice. <laughs> be nice. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the Concealed Taco Dude Pos- Podcast. <laughs> the Poscast? Poscast. <laughs> Let's t- take two. Take two. <laughs> <laughs>